Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little and this is your weekly Neo TA Wrap. Where we take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened last week and what does it tell us about the coming ones. I do this show once a week, every Sunday night, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. First of all, let me uh, bring you up to date. I was traveling last week and unavailable, unable to, uh, you know, be here to do the shows uh, the last two days of the week as I typically do. Uh, I had planned to do them from the road, just didn't happen. Uh, facilities weren't available, and so I kind of gave up on that idea. So I apologize uh, in advance for my absence. Uh, and uh, you know hopefully things will be more smooth going forward as far as what happened to these markets uh, let's start with the ending numbers for the week uh, you were basically flat on the week but that was after huge volatility all but the Dow still up on the year although the listed issues are the ones that are struggling if we go look at the actual uh, indexes uh, to see how they uh, look We'll start here with the S&P 500, and let's backtrack for those days that we missed and kind of bring it into context here tonight. So if we look at the S&P 500, you know, we've had a range in place for some time. That range still is in place. It's just that it was definitely tested, and what I'm talking about is here on the daily, right? You came down, you tried to break out all these swing point lows and did so. Then it bounces back up and does a retest regenerate a bearish one right tries to regenerate lower that's this area so what does it do it tries to regenerate lower you get the big spill on Tuesday right flips back around and hammer reverses higher I said I believe the next day I actually said that you know expect that high volume low to probably try to get tested that's what they tried to do the very next day, almost a takeaway bar, but not quite. So I did a show up until that day. The next day where the shows were missing, um, or actually I guess I didn't do a show that day. The next day though, it goes up, tries to get above it, can't, tries to get back down, closes down at the lows. Looking like it's going to try to break down, right? Well, not to be. You're getting news that Greece is going to get its problems resolved. And what does that do? Creates a big spike up. And what are we now? We're doing the retest regen zone again, trying to get above it. And if we can trade above it for a couple of bars, it will pretty much tell us it's going to target that high. That's the breakdown bar. That's back on June 30th. So that's the bar I'd be looking for the test on. Now that's on the daily. If we pull it back and look at the weekly, it's a slightly different story and then in the story here is that you actually have a couple swing point low test this one and this one here and it tried to break under both of them but were unable to do so and so you actually have a situation where this has tried to break lower was unable to break lower and the result was that you flipped around did a hammer closed up under uh, closed back inside uh, the higher price point no break on the on this time frame and we're on the weekly time frame if, of course you look at it on the monthly really not a lot happening it's trying to roll looks like it's trying to roll but so far they won't let it roll now if we look at the nasdaq nasdaq also uh, hammer reversal on that uh, july 7th comes back and test it and actually test slightly underneath the low so you get under it back over it you don't have huge volume here pushes back up and on Friday was pushing that top hasn't quite got over it tested into it but was unable to get over it again if it tests over it where's it gonna go well it's gonna try to come back to that breakdown bar which is here and that is the same bar as the Jan, uh, excuse me the June 29th bar so push over this you're going to try to test up into here that's a pretty big bounce what happens if you can't push over it what happens if we simply just come straight back down well that straight back down I would think test into uh, these lows uh, somewhere into these lows uh, into this area here this low here that would be the price points 
that I would be looking at. That's about 49.60 to 63, somewhere in that area. So up above or below, you can see kind of what the test is. I suspect what we're going to see is we're going to see some sort of an ABCD structure take place, whether it's immediate or a little bit later, to try to break over this high. If it gets deeper, right, then the bounce is only going to take it back. You know, again, if we did deeper, let's say to here, then your bounce would only take you back to do the test. So a deeper retrace back to say 49.39, 49.40, you know, down in this area, that would just give you an ABCD structure potentially uh, to come back up and test that high. NDX set up almost the same way, doesn't really look much different, just a little bit uh, weaker. And then if we look at the Russell, the Russell is the one that's telling us that this market's going to try to go higher. And why is that? Well, the Russell has actually already gotten over that bar. In other words, it's outside. It's not an inside bar anymore. It's over it. And it's into the breakdown bar. And so the Russell, to me, is already saying, hey, we're going to come back up and we're going to try to test the top of the breakdown bar uh, on this move. So maybe a little ABCD structure to get up there, but that's the way it's set up. Elsewhere, if we look overseas, we actually had... Uh, some good news overseas, uh, both on uh, the European and the Asian continents. Uh, let's start with the European continent because that's where everything's happening with Greece. Uh, this did test lower, got underneath it. Uh, that's the uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday bars. So on the July 7th, the 8th, you get underneath it, back over it, and you close there. Taking that farther, you get a nice big bounce, gap up. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come in now and try to close this gap area test back into this area. Again, that would be just like on our indexes set up some sort of an ABCD structure to try to take you higher and the target is going to be the swing point high uh, if in fact it makes that move. The good thing that happened already is that you had a swing point low. That was a bearish retest regenerate. You came into it on Thursday, you blow right past it on Friday. If it stays up there another bar, it's going to make me think uh, that, again, we're going to go sideways, not down anymore. And that's, uh, you know, if, if it can hold it, that's what it should do. Uh, that's the ideal of that retest regen. If it can't regenerate lower, they're going to try to take it higher. If we look at the DAX, the DAX over here uh, doing the same sort of thing over its bearish retest regen, same setup just has been a little bit weaker. Uh, with the Greek news that's coming out this evening, looks like uh, the uh, EU is going to require Greece to push through some measures to win back the EU support to actually come and try to do another bailout. So that's where that sits at this particular point. And that could be what gives us a little pullback uh, to start the week. If we go over to Asia, in that continent, first we'll start with Japan. A big spike down, big high volume. This looks very much like our reversal uh, last week that then got taken away. Friday goes over, gets back under. That wants to trade back down. That's the Nikkei. If we look at, and actually if we look at the weekly, it tested under the lows. Couldn't stay there, but had the volume, which suggests it can come back and test it again. If we look at Hong Kong, we had a huge push down, big spike down, leaves volume at the bottom on the daily. You get a two-day bounce, usually two to three days You know, on the daily chart on the bounce is about all you can expect. The swing point low here that was broken is way up at this time frame, so you got a long way to go just to get back up there. I suspect it's going to try to get there at some point, but to get there, it's going to have to do an ABCD structure on the way up, most likely. Whether that starts from here or whether it starts from a little bit higher, uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, certainly this market, uh, the tenor of this market has changed. If we get a continuation bounce, I would think this bar might be uh, the price point to look at as it comes back into that area. Uh, so somewhere in here probably fails, comes back down. How far? Maybe the tops of these bars and then some sort of a bounce up to finally do that retest regen zone on the uh, daily. If we look at the weekly, 
you can see the damage that was done, the volume that was left. This is going to be a range trade. Uh, it's a range trade for sure at this point. The thing that's amazing is it was a bullish retest regen zone. And that was this area here. And that is very high probability that it's going to hold and bounce. And look at what it did. Even though it blew the volume out, went way below it, all the way down to here, it did flip back around, came up, and held it on the weekly. So expect some sort of sideways to bounce. Uh, I don't think you're going to get much of a bounce out of this, probably into this area here. If we look at that price point, uh, 25,640. Let's bring that daily back up now and look at it. And 25,640 is, yeah, it's right about that price point we were just talking about. So that, that's the way the Hang Seng looks. Now, Shanghai. Talk about a disaster move to the downside. Shanghai dropped 35% straight away on the way down. Now, it just got a huge bounce you know, like 15, 20% or so. Uh, but, but, you know, you're talking about 35 down, it's going to take 55 to get it back. You just did 20. Where is this one going to try to go to? Well, you do have a retest regen off of this bar. And so that to me would be the price point to look at on the way back. That's around 4,000. So expect the bounce up into 4,000, some sort of a pullback. And then that pullback, we'll see if it's going to trade deeper or not. So something into here, right? Some sort of a pullback. I would think maybe into the bottom of this bar. And then try to ABCD this thing higher. If it can do that, you know, then once again, you've got range trades building out. And I suspect this is going to be a range trade at some point. The problem is, is when it makes a deep move like that you want to see the bounce and you want to see this hold so that you know you got a range trade and we don't have all that yet Europe's much farther along in its range trade Asia's just starting it that's the world indexes that's where we're at that gives you a good feel here's the the weekly on it you see volume on the bottom it also came in did a retest regen and held if we look over at a couple of other uh, interesting uh, charts uh, the one that caught my eye was the, um, uh, let me pull it up here, where did it go? Oh, there, Australia. Australia chart actually traded under, back over, had less volume. This one, even though it's been in a steep downtrend, this one looks like it wants to turn and try to trade uh, back to the upside. So you've had this trend. I suspect this one's going to get higher than people expect, probably break a swing point high and start trading this thing sideways. So that's the way Australia is set up. Uh, the rest of them, not that interesting. If I look over at the, um, the sectors, sectors are doing pretty good domestically. Look like they're gonna try to trade higher. And finally, if I, I pull over to the ox markets, uh, there you have some uh, uh, damage in the bonds. Let's pull up the bonds here. So here's the bonds, uh, TLT, wallowing in this lower zone weekly doing the same thing looks like it's trying to set up one more time another ABCD structure to the downside so if I look at that I see a high here a push down right that potentially can take it quite a bit lower uh, that's the TLT and we may just have an ABCD structure setting up here uh, to try to do a nested one on the way down so bonds not looking too clean that, if it starts to fall again, is going to be an issue. And on this bounce, it's coming back into the big bar. Uh, I suspect it's going to have a hard time uh, getting over this area. If I look at the dollar, uh, dollar's just range trading. And let's put it on the weekly. That range trade so far is holding. Uh, dollar could trade lower in this range. Now, the range we were looking at uh, before was in this area, right? We kind of had these three nested areas. Add another one up here and so the dollar uh, at this point is still holding that third range it came down to about here it's still holding that third range question is is will it be able to hold it or is it going to fail and uh, we'll have to see I, I don't know we certainly could get another spike down another range expansion down into this area if so I suspect that's going to be the last trip down 
And the reason I say we could get that is if you look at this, you actually have this ABCD structure that did not get completed, right? A little bounce off of it. You could get another one, bounces down, back up, and then bounces down to finish it off. So uh, dollar doesn't look like it's quite out of the woods, but I do think if you look at long term, right, this dollar is going to go higher before it's over. And so don't get fooled by dollar quote unquote weakness at this point. And as part of that, if that's true, then the euro, which is also range trading now, is eventually going to continue this downtrend. And so what we'll be looking for is, can that bounce come up into that 119 area? That's going to be the ideal spot to sell it short, if in fact it can. Uh, let me see. I think those are the main things. The only other thing I saw that was really interesting was the EEM. If we look at the EEM, uh, got a little bounce going. But what was interesting here is it traded underneath the swing point low, held, right, and it's going to try to bounce uh, back up. So that's the uh, that's the state of the markets if you ask me what's going to happen I suspect we're going to have a bias to the upside this week and they're going to try to push it especially in Europe and that's going to come on the heels of the news flow out of the Greek situation most likely well folks uh, thanks for joining me again as always I appreciate it tell a friend tell two I'm LA this is and was your weekly Neo TA wrap have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow good night